it, as I said, only gives you the host and the ports, or as the MAP calls them, services. Um, and there's a, some, some extra information that's just not saved. So uh, I like to run MAP separately and do the import. But there you go. Okay. Um, when you import, you're going to import into a database. The uh, first thing you need to do with uh, Metasploit is declare what type of database you want to use. I have to use SQLite because it puts the file in the home directory. It doesn't, you don't need a uh, SQL server or a Postgres server or anything else up and running. If you just declare SQLite 3, the file will be there on your, in, in your uh, home directory. You can pick that file up, uh, SCP it to another uh, Metasploit um, uh, install, import everything really quickly, and it is encrypted. If you just, uh, when you first start Metasploit, if you just say db underscore create, it will create its own database. Um, and then it will start throwing everything in there. Or you can declare what database you want to work with. So if you have a, uh, a list of uh, Kentucky IP addresses or Kentucky uh, targets, and you've got a different list for Ohio targets, you can keep them in completely separate databases. Um, if you have all Windows targets in one database, Linux targets in another database, however you want But anyway, you just declare, give it a name. Um, there's no passwords or anything that you need to keep up inside of Metasploit. But, uh, um, so it, it will do that all for you. Um, so, once you create the database, it's already loaded. If you exit out of, out of Metasploit and come back into Metasploit and you've already got your database there, then all you need to declare is db underscore connect. That will connect you to the, to the default database you set up. Or if you save a specific one, you just say connect to whichever database. With SQLite, it's really easy because the database are in, in the uh, Metasploit uh, directory. Once you've done your scan, um, once you've imported all of that information, now you get to look at it through the, uh, the Metasploit point of view. The two most important things are DB hosts and DB services. If you just declare DB hosts, then it will show you all of the hosts that it has in its database. If it's only one, it will show you one. If it's 100, it will show you all 100. If you declare which IP address you want to look for, like you're saying you want to look to see what info is on this host, then you say db underscore hosts space that particular IP address. And uh, if you want options, just db hosts space dash h. Metasploit is really good about almost any command you want to run. If you just do dash h, you can figure out what it is. It's the the uh, info is really tightly wound inside, so you don't have to back out to something else to, to read a man page or something. It's all inside the console. Um, and then the down at the box is available columns. That is all the different information that it's basically pulling from Nmap and then telling you so that you can sort. If you've done a scan, you, you didn't know which ones were Windows boxes or which ones were Linux. You can sort your, your database right here by just saying dash C and then specifying the column, um, plus some stuff. DB underscore services is the ports that are open on the hosts that you scanned. So if I say DB services on this IP address, it's going to tell me the five, seven, or, or however many ports you have open. Um, it's also going to tell you what vulnerabilities line up to the ports that are open, so if you have anything that's exploitable that you've already scanned. So 
So once you've done the scan and uh, you want to exploit the box, this is where uh, uh, DB Autopom it comes into play. These uh, are the options for uh, select the vulnerabilities to scan by the ports that are open, um, tell you everything that's, that's uh, running, actually exploit it. And then the dash R is for making a reverse shell connect back to you. Dash I declares specifically which host you want to exploit. If you have a database of 100 hosts and you don't specify an IP address, then it will try to exploit every single host in your database. If your own host happens to be in there, then you can specify X or exclude this particular IP. There's also a new feature too for rankings, so like based off of the exploit. Like for example, when you're doing mass image of a system, there's different category rankings. So you either have like bad, good, or excellent based off of maybe like a out service or exploit's kind of shaky and crash the service. You can actually do like an um, a, a excellent ranking, so it only fire off exploits that it thinks won't crash the service or not something, which is pretty nice. Um, and uh, also, I, I kind of want to mention here, DB Autopone is not the, really the best way for Metasploit to uh, pop a box. Um, it's much better if you know a, a specific vulnerability on the server you're running at. It's much more, uh, it's much less obvious and it's much more sneaky just to run a single exploit and get in. The idea behind DB Autopone and the idea behind Metasploit is it's a framework. So in the context of the framework, all of the exploits are loaded in there and you just, as a dumb script kitty, just run it. You don't really have to think about what vulnerabilities are open. If you scan and then you run against it, that's all it is. You don't have to know how to get in the box. Um, DB Autopone is, is also, it's running so much at the same time, it, like he said, it can really overwhelm the box and overwhelm particular servers. So my, uh, my point in, in showing you this is just kind of the, uh, of what Metasploit actually it, Metasploit can be. Um, if you think back to uh, the, I think it was the Melissa virus that was uh, uh, released about 10 years ago or something like that. It was actually written in I think 30 minutes. Some some guy had uh, had been to a, a strip club I think, came home, downloaded a, uh, a virus creator, some uh, virus creator software. Um, and then named it after the distributor he just seen. I hate it when I get a virus after being named on the And then, within, within, literally within 30 minutes of creating it and then releasing it, it owned the entire internet. Um, he didn't mean for it to get back that big. He had no idea what he was even really doing. And that's kind of what I wanted to demonstrate is you don't even have to really know how the exploit works or why the exploit works because Metasploit is a framework that allows you to swing back and forth to the parts you do know. Um, if you can get to this point and run this exploit, then you can just keep running and keep running and keep running and it, and it doesn't matter. If you've got a server out there, um, you can <coughs> run all day long. You can run, have Nmap continually coming up with random IP addresses to scan and you can have DB Autopilot continually sitting there trying to own every IP that comes up. Um, this, for me, was the most awesome thing about Metasploit. Um, there, there have always been exploits and scripts and different ways of, of exploiting a box or a particular service. Um, and with Metasploit being a framework, it's perfect because you don't have to know each individual step. You don't have to hardwire or uh, change your variables or whatever to get your specific thing working. You just load the exploits. Every week, almost every day, there are new exploits coming out. So you don't even have to know what they are if you just run auto -pom. Every exploit that you have loaded and downloaded is going to try to hit that target. Um, any questions? Okay. Um, the uh, third thing I wanted to talk about was uh, pivot. In a uh, networking concept,